in my quest to become the ultimate band nerd, I made a new purchase. Now, for someone who writes a blog uh, and essentially a textbook on the instruments of the band, saying you just finally became a true band nerd is a big claim. Well, the standard definition of a band nerd is someone who owns their own alto clarinet. And today I received my own alto clarinet. Now, I decided I would do an unboxing of it. I have not seen the instrument. I just got it on eBay. But here's the deal with the unboxing. The seller shipped it in case with no box. I am hoping the instrument is not damaged. Here goes. It is taped up pretty well. It's got all sorts of fragile stickers on it. I'm hoping the Postal Service heeded those warnings. But when I saw the post lady hand me this, I started to cringe because it is a wooden alto clarinet and those things can go out of adjustment easily. Now, I have no clue if it was in adjustment before I got it. We'll see. I had been searching on eBay for some time for an old uh, alto clarinet that I could use. Um, I had been using my school's Bundy. Now, the thing about the Bundy clarinets, which they don't make anymore, is that they were the last of the open hold altos. Now, the open hold altos are not the greatest instruments in the world, to put it lightly. The open holes just led to a whole bunch of problems on the instrument, and they're just not the most user friendly in the world. So I was looking for a closed hole, which is pretty much any other make, and what I happen to get is a noble instrument. Now, noble is uh, associated with LeBlanc. Now, of course, LeBlanc is for all intents and purposes, no longer in existence either, which is a rather sad situation there because they produced some of the best harmony clarinets made, particularly their contra clarinets. They were the ones who made the paperclip contras. They're not, they haven't been made in some time now. So, Noble was their student line. From doing my research, the only difference between the Noble instrument and the professional LeBlanc is the neck. The LeBlanc alto clarinet has a swan neck in it, a double curve, whereas the Noble has a single curve, which is fine. In fact, knowing a little bit of acoustical research, the single curve is probably a better solution. Let's open this thing up. All right, I can show you exactly what I'm talking about in the neck. Here is the neck, upside down. Now, the very nice thing about this neck, and one reason that I really wanted to try and get the Noble is, well, it should be adjustable, but this one seems to be completely frozen. So I will have to do some work on that, but this should be a two-piece neck here. And again, that will take some adjusting. It comes with two mouthpieces and, in fact, two ligatures. In fact, one of them is a nice Rovner ligature. So this mouthpiece here is a George M. Bundy mouthpiece. I've got one of these at my junior high. Not great. This is, appears to be a brand new, never used Yamaha alto clarinet mouthpiece and what appears to be a brand new, never used Rovner with mouthpiece cap. That's pretty nice. Also comes with 
a mouthpiece pouch, and a brand new Neotech neck strap. The accessories alone are worth quite a bit. I paid $300 for this clarinet. And I, when I was calculating the accessories, there's $200 of accessories here, including a brand new case. So let's take a look at the instrument proper. Okay, so I'm hoping I don't have to do too much repair on this. Okay, I'm hearing good key action. Make sure this is a two-piece instrument, and lo and behold, it is. Very nice to be able to adjust it. Were I to have a different case, it would be it could be a nice two-piece case. Let's get her put back together. Oh, we're having some issues here. That cork just came off. So that middle joint is going to have to be completely recorked. So that's fault number one on the instrument. Let's start putting her together. Put neck in. As I'm doing the visual inspection, I see very little in the sign of damage to the wood. There is some scratches down here. That's to be expected. This instrument is uh, probably 40, 50 years old. Bell. Let's see. Let's take a look at bell. Key on the bell. And a couple dings, a couple scratches. Otherwise, the bell appears to be in perfect shape. Now let's put it on, and I've got a fully functional alto clarinet. Now I'm going to go with the Rovner mouthpiece. Eventually I'm going to upgrade to a Vandoren uh, B44, I think is the model. It's the 44. I, I played it before. It's a really outstanding mouthpiece for your alto. One reason I tried to get uh, the LeBlanc uh, style, LeBlanc Vito uh, Noble, is they have a considerably larger bore than do uh, some of the other alto clarinets. The larger bore is going to get a less resistant sound. It's a little closer to bass and a little easier blowing. So let's see what happens. I've got... Well, a brand new Alto Reed, a Van Doren 3. A little wet. I'm hoping this thing plays right out of the box. Reed on the table. All right, let's see what happens here. Hmm. First thing I notice is the neck is going to need to be recorked. It's really wiggly. And it plays right out of the box. There's a bit of a buzz on a few notes. Uh, sounds like some keypad height uh, issue there, but overall, not bad right out of the box. Let's see what happens in the Clarino range. And it plays easily right up to that high F. And that plays so much easier than my school's Bundy. And this is on the just the cheap uh, Yamaha mouthpiece. I think I checked and these things retail for about 25 bucks. Um, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. It plays quite nicely.
it plays right up there, pretty even, pretty big sound. This is not the alto clarinet that gets disparaged by so many band directors. This thing plays, and I'm really surprised with it. I really think it's a nice sounding instrument. Put a professional Van Doren mouthpiece on here, and it'll be you'll be hard pressed to tell the difference between this and a basset horn. Only thing lacking is the extension down to, in this case, we just need to go down to a low D, but of course, bassets go down to the written low C, which on this instrument, written low C would sound E flat right below the bass clef. To my knowledge, no one has ever constructed a, an alto clarinet extending down to low C. One of my goals on this instrument is to build an extension. To, so I can have a low C alto clarinet. Put three thumb keys right back here underneath the thumb rest. The thumb rest would need to be brought up just a hair and solder on a peg. That's something that I think all alto clarinets need to have done is put a peg on it so it can be played like a bass clarinet. It's got enough weight to it that it really needs to have an extra support. I can put the neck strap on. Let's see if this neck strap will even fit. I know the Neotechs have a pretty, oh, it does fit pretty well, pretty wide hook. This works. sound up in that clarino range. A few squeaks, that's just me getting used to this instrument. But it plays, at this point, nicer than my B-flat clarinet. Nicer than my E-flat clarinet. Much nicer than my G, if you've watched a couple of videos that I put out on the G clarinet. That thing still is giving me trouble. I've ordered a new mouthpiece to see what that will do to fix it. And I, I'm thinking perhaps all of my issues with the G are in the mouthpiece. But this thing right out of the box, of course, used probably 40 years old or thereabouts, plays really well. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> Thank you. 